All right, so just playing around in the video here, guys. Getting into the holiday spirit. On the other side of my bench, I don't know if you can see it. It looks like an axial parts convention exploded. I have 10 three diffs. I have 10 two diffs. I have an old school Wraith transmission, uh, OG, uh, and SCX 10 style. Come out of another Wraith. Two more Wraiths tore apart. We have started into our endeavor of the Wraith 1 9 build. That's going to be a separate video. Um, what I wanted to share with you guys, I had done a video where I was doing the overview. The uh, overview. Well, I was talking about explaining uh, the little rock climb that we have there. Uh, I have been working on setting up the daughter's Red Cat Gen 8. Uh, this is going to be one of the final videos I do of that. I just wanted to go over, mainly what this is for is a shock setup that I have found myself to be uber impressed with. And uh, <clears throat> just some different stuff here, what I've done in combination with that to get this truck. It's performing superbly for a Gen 8. Um, I'm going to go over, go over some things, uh, the shocks, show you guys what I'm talking about the setup of the shocks a little bit and I'm going to provide a link in the bottom uh, at the uh, in the link in the description for a YouTube channel uh, a guy's uh, the guy's name is Ginger Ninja uh, <laughs> he actually has a really good video of these desert lizard shocks set up and uh, man I I, I was kind of hesitant at, at trying them before uh, a lot of people you know were you know don't really like them they're you know they liked them but they weren't like blown away by them uh, personally myself on the gen 8 platform uh, I've ran a lot of other shocks and in my opinion I think this is just it's a killer shock for the gen 8 uh, I'd imagine they would work just as well I don't know because I don't have a gen 9 but if the body roll issue <clears throat> is the same on the gen 9 that you have with the gen 8 Wow, those liz desert lizard shocks. Man, I'm telling you. Uh, I wouldn't run anything else. So let's get into a few things, what I've done here with the with the Gen 8. Uh, I'm currently waiting on, I bought the Injura uh, silicone inserts. They call them foams. Uh, I bought them because they were $20 a set. Uh, a lot of people were saying they perform... You know, on par, kind of like <clears throat> what you would get out of, per se, like the Proline Dual Stage Foam. Uh, I don't think they like a wide tire. Um, I just needed a, a little bit of something with a little more sidewall support here because of the uh, Gen 8's kind of, you know, it is a heavier truck. Uh, I am running the brass in the front of this truck, but not a lot of it. I have the inner and the outer brass portals. That's it for weight on the front of this truck. Um, but it is enough to where you get this sidewall, your tire folding over on you. And I didn't want to spend a bunch of money. And I know I have like the YZZRs. I have a set of squid certs coming. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know you can buy the 3D print stuff. Those are 20 bucks. They'll be plenty waterproof enough because this truck does see water, uh, which is better than what you're going to get out of a dual, uh, probably a dual stage or a single stage foam. They're definitely going to be met more sidewall uh, support than, than a single stage foam. Um, and I just wanted to try them out. They're 20 bucks. I think the only other cheap insert out there that I found, the YZZRs on Etsy for 35 uh, yes, probably would have been a better go-to. I've heard some people say that they fell apart on them or they wear quicker than like the squid certs. I don't know. I wasn't spending like 50 bucks on this truck for inserts. Uh, it's my daughter's truck. I'm trying to stay more budget-wise but squeeze as much performance out of it as I can. So with that being said, we're going to dive into some changes that I've made to this truck. Uh, first thing is, guys, of course, I did make this rear bumper to get the highest clearance bumper I could get on the rear. And I'm going to pretty it up around the edges around on it a little bit to make it look better. 
Um, I ended up trimming here in the bottom of the body, trimming some a few millimeters off, well, quite a few off of, not, not a terrible amount. I didn't cut clear up into the door of the body. And then I've, I was able to move the sliders in and all the way up 12 millimeters. So we have raised these rock sliders because I wanted to keep the rock sliders. I didn't want my body getting tore up and gouging into rocks and stuff. I still like to run rock sliders on my stuff. Without spending any money, I was just able to move these up, moved them up 12 millimeters. Fantastic moving these up that 12 millimeters. They absolutely do not dig down or hit on anything now. I'm clearing stuff that I'm clearing with like my SCX 10.3 base camp that I've got, that I got off of a friend that, you know, is what I call, you know, more of a performance oriented rock, rock truck than it is scaled. There's videos of that stuff on my channel. Uh, it clears just as good as anything else that I've had or ran with. Uh, since moving these up. These are our big hang-up point on the Gen 8s. I have trimmed the rear body and I just came down here since I removed the fender flares because I didn't want them big gaudy fender, fender flares on there and it took weight off the body. <clears throat> so I just came in here and I trimmed my bottom quarters flush almost all the way around. I actually came up a little bit here still at a little bit of an angle. It still kind of comes up and then straight across and over and that, that took away most of the majority of the hang up here without having to pinch or cut or do major um, uh, cutting on the body. I just basically came right down here below the last hole and, and right up against it and then took my Dremel and cleaned it up. Uh, I have rounded the wheel wells here. I, I, I need to do this corner back here and round that out a little bit. I've rounded these to look more like the scouts had the rounded fender wells. Uh, same way here. I have rounded it here, and then I rounded the front up here just to kind of round out the fender wells a little bit. Um, super, couldn't be happier with this truck. Uh, and of course, we went to more of the comp style front bumper here. Uh, but the number one thing that I was able to do to this truck, and I ran, I've run TRX4 shocks on this, on these Gen 8s. I have ran internal spring shocks the pin spring modded shocks on these gen 8s i have ran a set of traxxas big bores uh on these red cat gen 8s i have ran the regular traxxas trx 4s with soft springs no matter what you run on these gen 8s they still have the notorious and hold on a second we will pause this here and i will grab my other gen 8 okay so this is my gen 8 axe edition basically a brand new Gen 8 axe. The only thing I've modifications I've made to this truck is the Enjora wheels, 10 millimeter offsets, and with the carbon fiber centers and the Toyo tires. Um, but what I'm referring to is what I call just that good old body roll. Uh, it, it's okay, it, the, the Gen 8 just has too much. Um, this, this flopping around, this just kills you when you're trying to get performance oriented when it comes to the Gen 8. Um, it's just, it's awful. I was going to sell this truck. I have decided I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the shocks on this one as I did to my daughter's. Uh, and probably, I don't know if I'm going to do the rock sliders and the body or anything, but because I don't want to, I don't want to cut up the axe edition this is basically a brand new axe edition that i got on trade so um but i am going i just this this is terrible it's awful um you can do away with that and still keep the suspension flex these trucks have and i'm going to show you here in a second um yeah but this like i said i just wanted to show you before we move on to what i'm what i'm talking about here this right here this just ridiculous body flopping around um, it's just, it's awful, it's horrible, it's horrid. So let's get this one out of the way and we'll grab the other Gen 8 here real quick. Yes, this says all the reef stuff in it and all that good stuff. So we'll grab my daughter's modified Gen 8 here. So this is what I'm talking about here. You can see, I don't, I'm really pushing on this one to get it to torque up. It don't hardly torque up at all. 
it still got it there a little bit when you really push it but you know this one you know i'm shoving down on now watch this boop boop see this what i'm talking about you know the camera's picking it up back there um i mean you let it watch it stays over it just stays flopped winged over uh it's like it's got ed um you know this doesn't have that anymore uh this is this is just the suspension set up for the gen 8 that is it has amazed me at how performance wise it's I can't see why anybody would run. I want to run anything else if you're looking for performance. So, let me make sure we're still recording good here. Yeah, let me move the camera around. Sorry, guys. Get it down here a little bit more. All right. So, to get away with to get a, to get this out of here to get this flop dog, I call it. But, but you know what I mean. You want more performance suspension. This is my best recommendation for you. And like I said, I'll put a link to his video, Ginger Ninja, on YouTube. The dude has an awesome Desert Lizard Shop Tech setup video that I'm going to link to this one. I'm not affiliated with him or anything. He just got a great video on how-tos. So, doing this setup, you don't lose. I'm going to grab this. You don't really lose anything, technically. Suspension wise, so you still got your suspension flex here. You still get your flex. Make sure the camera's picking it up. You're not really losing any of your flex. Okay. Still got your flex here. Everything sets down. It's got about exactly the same articulation. You don't need any more than that. You don't need crazy stupid stuff. Um, with this setup though, it's insane. How much it improved this truck way more of an improvement than adding weight uh in my opinion you can almost get away with just running the outer portal weights on these gen 8s with this suspension setup that i have how i how i have it set up right now so let's get into that i'm going to pull the body off of it and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay so what we got here what we got here, yeah. we have switched out. Um, my buddy had a barely used set of 90 millimeter Desert Lizard shocks, is what these are. Uh, I ended up not really needing any longer than that. Uh, the 90s work perfectly fine for this. Um, if you want to keep your ride height the same as your stock, I wanted this truck lowered. Uh, you are, you know, because you've got your multiple shock adjustments here on your, um, on your, on your Gen 8 platform, you can just come down here and take your 90 millimeter shock, even in this droop setup, and you can lower or mount your shock here in a different spot here on your shock towers, and you're still going to be able to keep your stock type ride height running this shock setup and still be able to benefit with this shock setup because they already provide you with multiple shock positioning front and rear on the Gen 8. So, aside from trimming off my battery box because I'm just running the small packs on this, so I, I half my battery box and move my battery up here into this tray to the forwardest position that I could get it. That's pretty much it and it has a Chromaster Sport 550 can, um, 12 turn brush motor, I believe what this one is, it's a 12 turn. That's it. It's even running the stock Hexfly ESC in it. Uh, I am going to upgrade this to the uh, Hobby Wing, uh, the G2 uh, on it. And like I said, it's my daughter's cult truck. It's not. It's not mine. I'm not putting tons and tons and tons of money in it. Oh, and I have upgraded the to the SSD link mounts here, and I've got the ProTech low profile steering horn. Uh, mounted on it to kind of do away with some of the bump steer stuff, which in my opinion the bump steer is really not that Huge of a thing to me with crawlers. So uh, but Let's move on to the shock setup so we've got 90 millimeter desert lizards. I'm running 40 weight shock oil all the way around But how I set these up is when you buy your desert lizards, they will come with these longer springs here Okay these are the hard ones. These obviously aren't the ones I'm running. These are the, these are the stiff ones. I've got the softest set that, they, that, that comes in the kit in these right now. 
That's what's in these is the soft is the soft springs. And what I've done was I took the little there's a I don't have any extra here. The little small cushion spring that they give you that comes stock in these when you get them out of the package and you take them apart. And I'm going to be doing a Desert Lizard shock building video here later on the channel for my Wraith. Because uh, I like them so much, that's what I got for my Wraith build. Um, I'm running the smallest little spring. I think it's probably the medium one, I think. It's the one that comes in it when you take them out of the package. I am running them in above the plunger. I'm running that one above the plunger, and I'll explain to you why I set it up that way. And then I have these in the softs actually internally dampening, so they're pulling the suspension back up to give me that complete droop setup. So, but when you do that setup, you need that little small cushiony spring above your piston and I'm running the four hole pistons. That's what's in these and 48 shock wool. It's just a regular. I didn't. No need to change. I, I, in the summertime, I think this this 48 oil will be pretty much spot on on like an 80 degree day. Uh, now that it's getting colder, 25 weight would have been a better choice, obviously, because when it gets colder, the oil gets thicker, so it slows the, the action down a little too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and pimp the 40 in here because I'm not. This truck set where I want it, it, it performs fantastic. Uh, but the reason why I say you need that little cushion spring is, is still riding between spots or on the trail, it still gives you that shock. It still gets you like a cool spring shock. It still gives you that amount to where you're not just hitting and bottoming, bottoming out. So this truck still gets the droop. It still gets the droop going there. You can see the... You can see the, the shock shaft when you set it down set the way of the truck she just slowly droops back down so and you can see here maybe the camera's picking it up i got that little bit of that little that little cushion in here for trailing doesn't bounce and flop around and act stupid it sucks it up nicely that little medium that little medium spring um like I said, I'm going to link Ginger Ninja's video. He explains it a lot better than me. I'm just roughly going over it. Um, because I said in that video I would do a bench video. You still get your articulation out of it, okay? You still get all print, you know what I mean? It's cold down here. But you're still getting your articulation out of everything. Still getting it. You know what I'm saying? You're not really losing anything. Uh, you could go to a hundred millimeter on these. I, I prefer, I like the 90 mils. That's just me. Um, a hundred millimeter would probably be pushing it, uh, but it would give you probably a little more even articulation than what you're getting from the stocks, from the stock truck setup. Uh, I wanted this thing to be a slam down as pretty much low as I possibly could get it set. But this thing performed fantastic. The only thing that was letting me down, like I said, was these foams here. Um, that was the only thing that was really letting me down. Uh, so that's why I picked up the Enjora foams uh, for this truck. So let's see. With that being said, what else will we move on to? That is the that is my 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 setup here. The Desert Lizards. On, on the Gen 8, and this is, I'm telling you, if you want to get rid of this floppity flop dog stuff here on the Gen 8, which is terrible, terrible, I mean, if you're scale, scale driving one, I guess it's okay, um, I still don't, I still don't like it, uh, it flops so much, man, uh, even if putting the added weight on it, it's still, it just, and you put a hard body on one of these, which I have a hard body Jeep Cherokee on one of these, the Enjoyer Cherokee, it gets even worse, uh, so I'm just these these desert lizards are are a, are a freaking lifesaver for these Gen 8 platform trucks. Uh, it really changed the way this truck performed, like amazing difference. So that's what that's why I got with the Gen 8. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, I think most people would probably be you can just see the droop out on this thing. Watch it just drop. Uh, that's what I've and I've run droops droop shocks like the soft, super soft springs on a bunch of different configurations this has been the absolute best out of all the shocks that i've tried so far no i haven't ran 
crazy expensive like drive techs and stuff like that and everything it's a gen 8 and it's my daughter's uh but for the bang for your buck for these things like 60 some dollars 60 bucks i just i'm blown away at how well they actually work they don't they haven't leaked on me yet um my buddy did use these for a short period of time he had them run I think in a standard configuration more so with a uh, regular spring type shock setup because there's so many variations you can run with these. They give you the one hole piston. You can change your weight shock oil. There's tons of different spring options they, can, they give you to try. You can do internal springs, full droop, partial droop. Pull, there's a plethora of just, you, you can change. There's so much adjustment and tuning with these shocks completely highly recommend these guys to you uh i am blown away at how well they worked um so yeah that's that's the setup here on the gen 8 you guys can go back and check that video out um when we were climbing up the rock there kind of just goofing around no matter what i did this thing would not make it i kept adding stupid weight taking weight moving weight um night and day difference that it made with these shocks it was like i didn't even have to try on that spot getting up that rock i didn't have to struggle there was i mean it just phenomenal improvement right there that's an 85 to 88 percent uh grade that that we're climbing up on that on that rock face and these gen 8s don't exactly do that real well anyways so and i'm talking like stock stuff uh, even putting aftermarket tires and stuff on it, it would not make that climb. Uh, even with the brass weight that I have on the front right here, you see, uh, it, it it wouldn't make that it wouldn't make that climb. Uh, going to these desert lizard shocks, that's the only way. And it was just like night and day, like flipping the switch, how well it, easy it made it. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I have picked up another set of desert lizards for this Gen 8 X, since I'm going to end up keeping it now. Um, and when she goes out trailing, that's going to be my main, uh, one of my main trailing trucks this spring and summer, I think, to go out and just do trailing stuff with my, with my daughter and my son. Uh, and then I'll have my wraith and everything. But uh, I really like the, I, I like the Red Cat platforms. I think they're good trucks. So, but anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, that's where we're at here with our shock set up here and if you guys want to give it a try i'd highly recommend it you can pick these desert lizards up about anywhere uh i really highly couldn't i couldn't recommend them anymore so from the rc dungeon peace